air is the leak in the condenser through the joints packing into the condenser as the pressure inside the condenser is below atmosphere so there is natural pressure gradient and hence the air will always leak from outside to inside in the condenser second is the reason is the feed water which contains the dissolved air this dissolved air get liberated when the steam is condensed into condenser because of the air leak in the condenser the vacuum pressure in the condenser will decrease and it will affect the condenser if let discuss the effects of air leakages as the mass of air will increase the pressure inside the air will increase and thus the back pressure in total will going to be increased because the p mix is the sum of the steam pressure plus air pressure if we look at the pv diagram for the runtime cycle we have a boiler pressure we have a p mix that is a condenser pressure and the area under this diagram represents the work done that is 1 2 3 4 represents the work done developed by turbine if the back pressure will increase the the pressure is increased from 4 to 4 dash thereby you have reduced work 1 2 3 dash 4 dash and therefore there is a decrease in the work of turbine by the quantity 4 3 3 dash 4 dash this is the ill effect of the air leakage in the condenser hence you have to always reduce the air leak in the condenser if the partial pressure pa increases in p mix which is equals to ps plus pa partial pressure of steam plus partial pressure of air for the same value of p mix if pa will increase then the value of ps will decrease and therefore as we are familiar for smaller value of saturation pressure the latent heat of vaporization will be more and therefore we have to remove the more heat the latent heat of vaporization and therefore the water circulated is to be more as compared to the regular load this can be seen with the ts plot also as seen from this uh, hs plot or ts plot the as the pr this is the higher pressure this is the intermediate pressure and this is the low pressure this quantity actually represents the hfg value as we see from this one as the pressure of the steam will go on decreasing the value of hfg will go on increasing and therefore that will be the net increase in the heat load of the condenser to satisfy this requirement we have to supply more quantity of water both are the disadvantages and hence whatever the air is present must be removed from the condenser air is normally removed using a separate air extraction pump the purpose of air extraction pump is to maintain the vacuum in the condenser we have the spherical shell here which represents the condenser this is the inlet of the steam turbine this is the condenser that is the regular water outer water inlet and water outlet will be on this side and through this side we have a air pump this side goes to hot well this side is coming from the turbine initially we have a mass of steam plus mass of air assuming that the mass of air will removed from this side which is not practically not possible because some steam will also going to be pass because this is a homogeneous mixture and the mass of steam will condense from this side so ideally speaking we will say here that the mass of steam remain constant on this side and mass of air will remove from this side m dot s represent the mass flow rate of steam in kg per hour m dot a is the mass flow rate of air in kg per hour we know that the mass flow rate is equals to volumetric flow rate multiplied by density and density is basically reciprocal of specific volume so we can write mass flow rate equal to volumetric flow rate upon specific volume or volumetric flow rate volumetric flow rate is the mass flow rate multiplied by specific volume volumetric flow rate is represented by v bar dot mass flow rate is m dot into v so we can calculate volumetric flow rate of steam as well as the volumetric flow rate of air in this equation if we put the mass of steam and instead of v we write v1 which is vg at the given temperature t1 that is for dry steam we can find out volumetric flow rate of steam as far as the air is concerned we have to use the ideal gas equation that is pv equals to mrt the specific volume of air is volume divided by mass which is equals to r t divided by p so r is the gas constant 20 27 T3 is the temperature at the section 3 and PA is the partial pressure of air at section 3 the volumetric flow rate of air therefore using this formula v bar dot air is equals to mass of air into specific volume of air which is equals to this quantity that is vf air at v3 at section 3 
from this equation it is very clear that the volume specific volume of air is directly proportional to temperature T3 and therefore volume of air is also directly proportional to temperature T3 if this if there is no cooling is provided near this section the temperature of T3 is same as T1 and therefore volumetric flow rate is very large and to handle this large volumetric flow rate we required large size of fan because volumetric flow rate is defined as the cross sectional area of pi by 4 d square multiplied by flow velocity to reduce the size of the fan the air at section 33 is cooled down by providing the cooling section that modification will show so this represent this is the additional cooling section and in this cooling section we can maintain the temperature of air lower than temperature t3 so as seen from this is the cooling section the temperature t3 is lower than t1 so volumetric flow rate of air now since t3 has been reduced by some quantity as compared to t1 the volumetric flow rate will decrease because v3 is now proportional to t3 and t3 already been lower than the value of t1 as compared to the first case so volumetric flow rate of air is v bar air is m dot a into v3 the total pressure in the condenser remains same the total pressure in the condenser remains same so p mix is equal to p atmospheric minus p vacuum p atmospheric is same p vacuum we have to find out p mix this is normally provided to you so you can find out p mix p mix is also equals to at section 1 we have ps1 plus pa1 ps1 can be obtained from p sach at temperature t1 and p mix at section 3 we have ps3 plus pa3 ps3 is again we can obtain as p sach at temperature t3 so we have two different section 1 and 3 at both we have partial pressure of steam and the partial pressure of air both both but both are the different values see the temperature at 1 and temperature 3 are now different using all these above set of equation number 1 number 2 and number 3 we can find out the partial pressure of steam at section 3 and once we know the partial pressure of steam at section 3 knowing the value of p mix we can find out partial pressure of air at section 3 and once the partial pressure of air at section 3 is known we can find out v3 using the relation rt upon p3 so capacity of air extraction pump which is same as the volume of air handled is mass of air multiplied by v3 since air and steam is a homogeneous mixture and when we remove the sum quantity of air using the air extraction pump some mass of steam is also carried away by the air extraction pump since air and steam is homogeneous whatever the volumetric flow rate of the air will be the same will be the flow rate of the steam even the temperature of air and the temperature of steam at section 3 are same so what we can write is volumetric flow rate of air at section 33 is same as volumetric flow rate of steam at section 33 and even the section temperature at 3 is same as ts3 therefore mass of steam handled by air pump at a section 33 is the volume of steam divided by specific volume at temperature t3 now already we know the volume of steam is same as volume of air so we can find out how much amount of steam is carried away by the air extraction pump